The United States will not impose new restrictions on Ukraine's use of U.S. weapons if North Korea joins the war with Russia, Pentagon announced on Monday. Our concern is growing that Russia intends to use these servicemen for combat or to support operations against Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region, Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh told media representatives. Earlier today, NATO chief Mark Ruta said that North Korean soldiers assisting Moscow have been deployed to Russia's Kursk that is partly controlled by Ukrainian troops. I can confirm that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia and that North Korean military units have been deployed to the Kursk region, Ruta told reporters. North Korean troops' involvement in the war in Ukraine marks an important escalation of the conflict and has alarmed Ukraine and its Western allies. Last week, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said, with reference to Ukrainian intelligence, that North Korean troops would soon be involved in fighting and urged international pressure on Kremlin and Pyongyang. According to information from Seoul and Kiev, North Korea is sending up to 10,000 troops to Moscow. NATO on Monday confirmed that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to aid in its almost three-year war against Ukraine and that some have already been deployed in Russia's Kursk border region, where Russia has been struggling to push back a Ukrainian incursion. Today, I can confirm that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia, and that North Korean military units have been deployed to the Kursk region, NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta told reporters. Ruta said that the move represents a significant escalation in North Korea's involvement in the conflict and marks a dangerous expansion of Russia's war. His remarks came after a high-level South Korean delegation including top intelligence and military officials as well as senior diplomats briefed the alliance's 32 national ambassadors at NATO headquarters in Brussels. Ruta said NATO is actively consulting within the alliance, with Ukraine, and with our Indo-Pacific partners, on developments and that he is due to talk soon with South Korea's president and Ukraine's defense minister. We continue to monitor the situation closely, he said. Adding thousands of North Korean soldiers to Europe's biggest conflict since World War II will pile more pressure on Ukraine's weary and overstretched army, as well as stoking geopolitical tensions in the Korean Peninsula and the wider Indo-Pacific region, including Japan and Australia. Western officials say. Russian President Vladimir Putin is keen to reshape global power dynamics. He sought to build a counterbalance to Western influence with a summit of BRICS countries, including the leaders of China and India, in Russia last week. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, citing intelligence reports, claimed last Friday that North Korean troops would be on the battlefield within days. He previously said his government has information that some 10,000 troops from North Korea were being readied to join Russian forces fighting against his country. Days before Zelensky spoke, American and South Korean officials said there was evidence North Korea had dispatched troops to Russia. The US said around 3,000 North Korean troops had been deployed to Russia for training. Israel achieved all its objectives in its attack against military targets in Iran, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, while Iranian leaders said the country would respond to the strikes. Israel says it hit 20 military targets Saturday in what it called a limited attack that nonetheless degraded Iranian air defenses and weapons facilities. We have severely struck Iran's defense capabilities and its ability to produce missiles, Netanyahu said Sunday at a memorial for the victims of the October 7, 2023, Hamas attack on Israeli communities near Gaza. The attack on Iran was precise and powerful, achieving all its objectives, Netanyahu said. Due to the Israeli strike, Iran will probably not be able to supply Russia with new ballistic missiles anytime soon. 
An important consequence of the Israeli strikes on Iran is that Iran will not be able to supply ballistic missiles to Russia for many months until it restores its production capacity. Writes Israeli Middle East expert and Haaretz journalist Anshul Pfeffer in X. In addition, Tehran will no longer be able to supply ballistic missiles to Hezbollah and Houthis terrorists. According to media reports, Israel has disabled 12 installations that are used to produce fuel for ballistic missiles, which make up a significant part of Iran's arsenal. It may take at least a year to produce new installations. Iranian President Masoud Pazeshkian told Iran's Council of Ministers on Sunday that the country will give an appropriate response to the strikes, state media reported. We are not seeking war, but we will defend the rights of our nation and our country, he said. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, supreme leader of the Islamic Republic, called the strikes a mistake by Israel in its calculation regarding Iran. Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant, meanwhile, said the war is being conducted without a clear compass. The significant developments, foremost among them the direct exchanges, increase the need to hold discussions and update the war objectives, he wrote in a letter to the cabinet. A spokesperson for Netanyahu called the letter highly perplexing. Israel's war objectives are constantly reviewed and were even recently expanded, the spokesperson said. Footage has been released, showing the first moments after the Israeli attack on the UAV production plant in Shamsabad, near Iran's Iraq city. The video footage shows fire in the UAV production plant. Iran has banned filming from the region. However, channels associated with the Iranian opposition published the video today. The destruction of the UAV production plant could seriously affect Iran's ability to supply kamikaze drones for Putin's army. The Israel Defense Forces attacked Iranian military sites, including air defense batteries and facilities involved in the production of ballistic missiles used in Iranian attacks on Israel on October 1 and April 14. <laughs> Thank you.